I suppose there is a little of James Bond in him, but the original idea came from a, uh, a television show way back with the actor Patrick McGowan in, um, called Danger Man. And uh, I suppose he was a James Bond type, but that's where the name, that was the thing I suppose that sparked the idea. Um, but being a cartoon, that's when he started getting silly. The idea that uh, a mouse could be a secret agent uh, and that he would have a, a sidekick like Penfold. Um, you know, I make no excuses. Well, you see, the thing you have to ask yourself is, has he really lost his eye? If he lifts that patch up, is there something else underneath? Well, you don't know, you see, I mean, uh, James Bond used to have uh, Q, the guy who would give him all sorts of secret weapons. And there could be something under that eye patch that we've never revealed. But we don't talk about how he lost his eye if he did lose his eye. There's other characters that do come from James Bond. I think that Colonel K is very like James Bond's M, his controller. Uh, Greenback's little white caterpillar Nero. I think it was a James Bond film. I think there was a, a villain called Blofeld who had a white Persian cat. And that certainly gave us the idea for Greenback having a white caterpillar. That, and then of course we added Nero's voice, which is David Jason saying silly things, speeded up very, 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 very fast. That's the voice of Nero the caterpillar. So if you listen very carefully, maybe record it and slow it down, you might hear David Jason saying something I don't know. Yeah, we, we broke a lot of rules with Danger Mouse. I think when we, when we set out to make Danger Mouse, the films that were around at the time, they weren't anarchistic like Danger Mouse is. The whole idea of the things that he does is anarchic. Um, the fact that if he runs too fast to the left, he can come off the edge of the film and have to struggle to get back on again. It, it's, I suppose it's art school mentality. We had a lot of uh, young designers in those early years who liked to break rules. And Danger Mouse was the perfect show to do odd things. I remember that um, they went into outer space. I think it was, was it the Custard Mice of Glut episode? Not really sure which one it was. But we went out into outer space and we had a section of the film to fill. You know, we're, uh, you all allocate a given number of weeks to turn the artwork around. You've got your script and you've got to fill it. So they're travelling through space and we've got, I don't know, 30 seconds of film to fill and we didn't want to put in. And I remember that I got photographs of London transport buses and photographs of birds and insects and cut them all out. And made it look as if the birds and the insects were looking out the windows of this bus and this bus goes... It's just this cut out of this bus goes sailing through space. And we used lots of odd things like that, like uh, photographs of flowers that seem to be just drifting in space. Now, it, 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 in a sort of structured animated film, you wouldn't do things like that. You wouldn't break the rules like that. But we did on Danger Mouse. We liked doing silly things like that. We liked breaking the rules. And um, I think the show was better for it. Well, 
the, the, I, mean, I don't suppose it's the sort of thing that I would ever claim that Danger Mouse is intelligent, but if, if you think about it, it, it is full of quirky things that I'm quite proud of. Um, the level of humour is, uh, I believe, it would be entertaining to adults. And I, take, for example, the, the announcer, the idea that you've got an announcer tucked away somewhere in a booth whose job is to introduce the show. I think we call him Isambard, I think. And we didn't just give him the task of introducing the show. We made him, we made him a little bit crazy. He was constantly talking about having left his bicycle outside the studio when he was coming in and he was saying, uh, looking for his bicycle clips or, and he'd, he'd say something and say, oh, I'm fed up of introducing this rubbish. I'm not going to introduce it anymore. And the telephone would ring and it would be his boss. And he'd say, oh, yes, sir. All right, sir. I, I won't do it again. So I'll... Now, the idea that you would use a, an announcer like that, make a character of him, was fresh and original. Where those ideas come from, where those sort of creative ideas come from, it, it, it's difficult to explain, really. If, if you have a creative group of people, they come. And you're thankful that they come. <laughs> and if you've got any sense as a director, you don't close the door on those ideas. You say, that's great, give me more like that. And Danger Mouse was a very enjoyable series to make. We had lots of freedom. I, I suppose you're, uh, you're not as presumptuous enough to believe that it does, but when you think about your own career and you realise that you have been influenced by what Chuck Jones did, what the Warner Brothers Studios did, you're influenced by Monty Python, uh, the Monty Python shows, by all sorts of comedians and all sorts of writing you influence. So yes, I, I think that Danger Mouse did influence people. If it didn't influence them, I like to think that it certainly entertained them down the years, that it gave them a lot of pleasure. And I think if something gives you pleasure, it stays in your head and it, it does become part of you. It, you, you do, it does influence you in, in strange ways, I think. Um, Oh, yes, I guess Danger Mouse did influence people. <laughs> and I was just sketching in the reception area while I was waiting for this meeting to start. And I came up with the design of Penfold. And when everybody saw it, I said, well, that's it, we've got Penfold. And it was only when we got back to the studios that Mark pointed out that I'd done a caricature of my brother. <laughs> He wore rather thick horn rimmed glasses and he was receding and so on. He had a round face, a bit like me. Um, he's never held it against me. I think he's quite proud of it, but I didn't know I'd done that until much later. Of course, he isn't as silly as Penfold and he's not a hamster, but there is a vague sort of feel of a brother. <laughs>